Well, good morning. And uh, it's been a while since I've been down this neck of the woods. Um, I'm still deciding to whether I use technology or my notes. Okay, so uh, I think what I might do is use these because I put them in bigger print. And I'm at an age where that really matters. And I just want to share with you a few points from Psalm 4, but um, uh, I did plan to teach those eight verses in, in a more methodical and exegetical way, but uh, I just want to share with you really, so just hopefully for just a brief moment, I did go over time last time and I had to jump in my car and take off quick. Um, but it, no, only kidding, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. But So I just want to share with a couple of things with you and... and uh, uh, and these come out of experiences that I've had over the last couple of years, which is about the time since I was here last, I think. Uh, and the men's camp was, I was, it's a few years, Doug, wasn't it, that I was there. Uh, since then, I've, I, I've, I've, had a, I've had an interesting journey. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that people are having surgery, because I hope this will encourage you, because that's what I mean. I've had a medical journey, and my whole two years has revolved around when's the next appointment and uh and so and and some of those issues were have been a little bit precarious uh and 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 uh, the things i've got to be aware of even now i've got a i've got a big zipper down here because i had to deal with my ticker and uh and and so those kind of issues make you rethink what you believe who you stand with and just how strong your faith is, and whether for me it was whether I believed actually what I, be, I was I'd been preaching and teaching for for thirty five or whatever it is years before I retired because of the cancer which was prior to this. So it's interesting, but these this is something I've really learned, and and uh, and I wanted to just share it with you. Uh, Evan phoned me up and asked me for a title, and I get, if you got your if there's a bulletin there, you'll find it says Sweet Slumber, I think. And then when I, when I hung up, I thought, what a weird title to give him. But I, I just couldn't think at the time what, what sort of title I'd give it because really I want to, I want to major on verse 8 that was read in the text this morning. Uh, and it has to do with how we sleep. And I'm not here to tell you I'm some doctor and psychologist or whatever else to help you uh, learn some, some uh, recitals to do that. I want to show you from a scriptural perspective how you can just rest in the Lord no matter what you go through, no matter how tough the times are. In fact, just as I was uh, sitting at my desk a few days ago, I saw this, this little cartoon came up. And it's, uh, I think the little dog is called Peanuts, isn't it? The, you know, Peanuts and then there's Linus and Lucy, I think. And, and I do remember that the dog, the Peanuts, he's got his little kennel, but he always would sleep on the roof of the cartoon. He's always lying back on... And, um, uh, and he was doing this in this little photo or little picture I saw. And uh, the thing that drew my attention, he made this statement. He says, I am out of order for the next eight hours. In other words, he said, I'm out of order. I'm going to sleep. And it was just... It, it touched me in the sense of... Um, here's little peanuts he's only a cartoon character but but sleep was important for him and eight hours of it for me personally it's closer to nine in winter maybe nine and a half um, and I think good sleep is something that we really desire and uh, um, if it doesn't happen we tend to run to the first aid box and we and we look for the diazepam or the uh, Tim has a Pam, and if we're really into health, we rush over to try and get the melatonin or whatever else. But um, you know what? It's it's um, it's it's an indication that something's not right with in 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 our thinking if we can't get to sleep, whether it's medical or or mental or whatever. The, but but we like to have our snooze time, and and David shows us how to go about that but also want to take it to Jeremiah because he learned it as well and it's something that and if you don't have trouble with sleep just listen in and don't fall asleep as practice okay but just listen in um, and, and I'm sure that you'll understand the whole point of this this morning 
is just to say you know what we've got an awesome God that we can rest in and we can be at peace no matter what's going on um, let's just pray father just open up your word uh, the scriptures to us lord we want to we want to hear from you we want to learn from you and we want to rest in you in the truest way so uh, lord just speak to our hearts encourage us this morning in jesus name we pray amen you know what we've got there are so many things going on um in the world and uh it was mentioned covid and and that sort of stuff and uh and fear appears to be one of the major things that that has attacked people uh, with this with this COVID, and uh, a lot of that might have, might come through the media and the way the media has approached that and thrown it out at us and all. Um, but out of that, of course, has come all this other uh, rubbish that goes on um, in America. It's it's a schmozzel, and the attack on Christianity now is horrific in America, and it's just building. Um, and and you know what? It, you will find that that will sweep over into a, a nation like Australia as well. And uh, and I'm a, I I really believe that that. Um, we get into that place where we will God will require us to stand strong, and so all these things are going on. Um, so there's there's a lot in the world that can take our sleep away. A lot in the world can cause us to become really in upheaval in our minds and in our hearts as we look at all this stuff. Uh, and we can turn around and and we can recite faith scriptures and we can recite all sorts of good things just to uh, try and um, and convince ourselves. But what we need to do is get the reality and the truth of what God has said in his word into our hearts because that's where we have the real tr- uh, peace and, and the tranquility. And uh, and so in... Um, in uh, uh, Psalm chapter 4, sorry, Psalm chapter 4. Um, chapter 4 is really a follow-on from chapter 3. And just very briefly, David is dealing with some real trauma. Uh, and it goes back to Second Samuel and the, and the issues that he went through. We know that he sinned badly and we know that he got himself in a mess of trouble. But um, his whole family turned against him and and Absalom would spend a lot of time drawing all those who were part of the armies of David and all away from King David away from his dad and he gathered all these guys and David heard what was going on and and he was being slandered and and there was rebellion going on and it came to the place where David had to flee and uh, and of course Absalom went looking for him because Absalom this great son wanted to kill his dad kill David and uh, and so chapters 3 and 4 of Psalms are really a, uh, the heart cries and the heart poundings, if you will, of King David as he's on the run and he's hiding from Absalom and hiding from these guys who, who had uh, been convinced by Absalom uh, that, that King David was, uh, David was finished and, and Absalom was now the king and was now going to be the leader. And uh, and so he's dealing with all these sorts of things. And this is the guy that God had said, you will be the king over Judah. You will be the king. Uh, but here he finds himself on the run. And out there, uh, it's uh, his life is basically in disarray. And it's not according to what he thought it should be. And so, uh, and, and so really David, when he writes these two Psalms, is is a whole lot like you and me in the in the situations that we find ourselves now you know i've mentioned the depravity of the world right now particularly uh, i know the u.s is suffering and for those who don't know that um in china there's another big fresh push against christianity pastors are getting uh, dis- uh, slaughtered over there churches are being destroyed and and there's uh, this xi jinping is is doing the best he can now to just um and get rid of christianity and make himself the god in china and so there's that going on for them over there for us we know we've as i said we've been through COVID and all but you know what it may well be just a family issue it may well be uh uh illness physical illness or whatever it may be it may be the workplace where worldly people just give you a, an extremely hard time uh, it's no different uh, you're suffering the same you're experiencing the same as what david was experiencing and he was struggling with this 
And so these two chapters uh, are, are the, give us the situation of David's plight. Uh, and particularly chapter 4 gives us a real uh, indication and understanding of how he coped with it. And I think it's good. Listen, we won't go there for time and all, but you know what? Jeremiah ex- was experiencing the same kind of th- situations, if you remember his story, the weeping prophet, the guy that had to bring the message of um, judgment to, to Judah uh, because of their rebellion against God, their disobedience and all. And God told him what, what was going to happen, that uh, he was going to send them out and they're going into exile. He's going to bring heavy judgment upon them. And, and Jeremiah had to handle that for a long while. But God also gave him uh, a tremendous message up in chapter 30, 31, 30, 31, 32 even, I think, but where he told him, I'm going to regather my people and all. And uh, if you were to read chapter 31, I think it is, you read how God has explained to Jeremiah where uh, in spite of what he's gone through, the abuse that he went through, the trauma, the the imprisonment, the dungeons that he lived in because of the message that he was giving forth, uh, God spoke to him and gave him this tremendous encouragement that... that, um, all would be well, I will restore my people and all. And uh, down two-thirds of the way through that chapter, you read where where it says that um, Jeremiah um, uh, must have been in a kind of like a vision that God gave it to him because he said, and and then I awoke and, and my sleep was sweet. His sleep was sweet. But it came about, the sleep was good because... God had given him encouragement. God had spoken to him. In spite of the, 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 the trouble that he was going through and he had to deliver this horrible message, God gave him this encouragement and it was, it was God's promise and God's covenant that enabled Jeremiah to say, now I will sleep sweetly. Well, my sleep has been sweet and it's been good to me. And so um, it's, it's the same principle that we see with David. In fact, let me just read this verse from Jeremiah. He said, My soul, my soul, I am in anguish. Oh, my heart, my heart is pounding in me. I cannot be silent because you have heard, oh, my soul, the trumpet of the, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. And it was because God had revealed to him what he was going to do with Israel, uh, the exile that it involved and the pain and but but God had already showed him. God, sorry, God then showed him a little further along uh, this tremendous uh, prophecy about the restoration uh, of Israel back into their land. And and of course we won't go there. As I said uh, in chapters thirty two, I had, look, I, I had it here thirty one and thirty two, uh, where where the promises of God enabled Jeremiah to just sleep well uh, because he could trust in the word of God. Um, uh, you know, when he awoke, the interesting thing about Jeremiah, by the way, when he awoke, he was still he was still in prison. When he woke up from that vision, he said, "Oh, the sleep was beautiful. Don't you love it when you get up in the morning? And you think, oh man, that was good, you know, you know, and, and, and you know, it's just it's just beautiful." Uh, he he woke out of such a great sleep because of what God was showing him. But the thing is, he was still in prison. He was still in in a predicament. He was still in a horrible place there. Jerusalem was still in a shambles but for Jeremiah he had the word of God and it's the word of God that enabled Jeremiah to sleep soundly to enjoy that that placing the head on a pillow or you know I love nothing better than to go to bed at night and put my head on my pillow and uh, and, you know we we normally we try we've we've had the, the grandies around for the last week so I haven't been able we haven't been able to have a prayer time on our own outside so we do it when we go to bed but you know just to have a time of prayer uh, we sometimes listen to some praise music and then we then we go to bed and we put our head on the pillow and it's just great and you know, you're gone the next thing you know you oh no it's morning you know but it's so good to have those kind of sleeps now I want to tell you for, for a long while I didn't have those because of what I was going through and the way the enemy would attack but um but God is so gracious if we'll just hang on his word. Listen to this in Proverbs 3.24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. <laughs> is, that, is that sweet or what? You know, that, to have that promise, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Your sleep will be sweet. 
And he goes on in uh, 25, in verse 25 and 26, he says, Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the onslaught of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence, and he'll keep your foot from being caught. What a great thing that is to hear from the Lord through the, through the wise man in Proverbs, you know, that when we lie down, there's no need to fear, there's no need to, to be worried. Because, you know, that's where the enemy really attacks you when you rest your head on your pillow that's when the enemy comes in seems like he comes in like a flood to try and just really tear you apart and uh and when i went through my circumstance you know and uh and and those those few weeks afterwards where i had to ensure that i could get a breath and i struggled to get a breath because it impacted my lungs and all and all those kind of things you you know what as much as you're strong in the lord you've been a christian for a lot of years i tell you what it still gets at you and the enemy still can come into here and bring a fear and bring apprehension about uh, what's going on you know the reality is of course um for a Christian, it's a win-win, you know. If you get well, you get well, you enjoy the family. If you don't get well and you go away and pass on, it's still a win situation because you go to be with the Lord. So, you know, but the enemy still gets at you. But, you know, to know these beautiful truths from God's Word, you know, that, that we can lie down and we can sleep and we can rest and uh, we can just put our trust in the Lord and, and there's no need to fear. Why? Because God has given clear indication and promises of restoration uh, uh, and so you know for for jeremiah he was able to have that sw sweet slumber as we termed the the title of the message and it's the way that we can too um, there is another guy which we won't go to for because i haven't even got the psalm for yet um, but habakkuk was the same he uh, he had trouble with what was going on and um and of course, we know that at the end of Habakkuk, he said, oh, if the, though the fig tree does not blossom and there's no fruit on the vine, you know, the olive tree fails, there's no, you know, and all this sort of stuff going, yet will I just trust in the Lord. I will praise the Lord. And so he learned that also from the, from the reality of who God was. And, uh, and it's just such a neat thing. And so, um, so, Let's have a listen to, to David. I'll just bring a couple of things out um, and just keep an eye on the time. I don't know. what, what the, Half past ten would be a good time, wouldn't it? Would that be okay? I'll, I'll try and do it in that, in that way. So he says, Hear me when I call, O God, in my, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. The first thing he does, there's four things I want to bring to your attention just in this very quickly. First thing he does is in, in, the, in the midst of turmoil, David prays. I'm telling you, prayer is powerful. You talk to the Creator. You're talking to the one who sent his son down uh, to pay a penalty so that you and I could have a, 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 an intimate relationship with the Creator of this heaven and earth. And that is pretty powerful that we can talk to him at any moment. Uh, and, and a lot of times for us, that happens at night. Uh, uh, you know, um, when when those when the enemy comes in and tries to de destroy, you know that that confidence. You know, we call out to the Lord, and so David, the first thing he did, uh, um, he, he prayed. Now I don't know about you, but me, I got a problem, and sometimes when I've been watching what's going on, and we 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 keep up. I like to keep up from a prophetical point of view of what's going on, and I like to know what's happening, you know. Uh, and so, uh, Rel and I, we we, you know, we're retired, so we've got a little bit of time to to listen to some of the stuff. Um, I I don't take too much credence in uh, our media. Okay, I want to tell you that we listen elsewhere. Okay, we, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, 2, 7, 9, 10, SBS, you name them, they're all fake narratives, you know, and they're not journalists, they're propagandists. Anyway, that's my, I just got that out, I just needed to get that out. Okay, I feel better for that, I feel better for that. But but we listen and, and we, we like to find out what's going on and so we... Um, uh, I then tend to get a little agitated is what I was going to say and, and I, I sometimes vent on social media. You know, I vented, I, I vented on something uh, about three, two or three days ago about 
I, did you watch the debate with uh, Trump and uh, and Sleepy Joe? You know, and then and the guy that did the moderating was pathetic and useless, and he was so lopsided it was horrible. That's my opinion. Okay, that's my opinion. And so I vented that. Well, my goodness me, the last count was over. Over for me, it was pretty good. It was over two hundred replies. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, whoa, you know, there's another one for you, whoa, you know. But as it turned out, I said to Ralph. Uh, about 99.9% of the people were in total agreement with what I said, which made me feel good. But, but you know what? You can do that. You can vent on social media and you can go off your face doing this sort of stuff. You know. But you know what? The most productive thing we can do is go to the sovereign God and say, Lord, look at this rubbish going on. You know, I bring it to you. You, you're in control. You haven't missed a beat on this and it hasn't caught you by surprise. And, and so we can do that. And this is why David's going, hear me when I call. You know, so, you know what's implied here in those first five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five words? Do you know what's implied there? Is that he knows God listens to every word that he speaks. Hear me when I call, God. Okay. He's hearing, he's listening. And he says, you have relieved me in my distress. And the word relieved there is very interesting. It means enlarge. You know, you know, have you ever heard that term, we're, in a, we're between a rock and a hard place, you know, or we're in a tight spot here, you know? But that's what David was in a tight spot. And he says, you have relieved me in my distress. He, literally, he is saying, you have enlarged my space. You have given me room to move here. You have given me room to be able to cope with this pressure that's on me. That's what he's saying there. And so, uh, and so the first thing he does is he prays. I like Romans 12. Let me just give you some scriptures. Romans 12:12, 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer. Ephesians 6:18, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Two verses there. Pray, pray, pray. One more. 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of the world is coming soon and you better believe it. Okay? It is. The end of the world as we know it, but the end of the world for us is we're going home. Therefore, he said, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. And this is what, this is what David, uh, very fir- uh, the very first thing he does is pray. Step number one, when the pressure has come, when the issues are there, when, when, the, when the, uh, the illness is there, when the surgery is getting close or even before it gets close, when the surgery or where the, when the family, where if I've got to go to work in amongst a bunch of heathens or, and it's going to be pressure, no, pray, pray, take it to the Lord in prayer, you know, that, that old hymn, take it to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, yeah. And so he says, you've given me room to cope and the room to move in this situation and circumstance. The second thing, I'm, go- I'm going as fast as I can. The second thing is this, in verses 2 and 3, he says, uh, How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? You know what he's doing? The second thing, first thing is he prays. The second thing he does is he pleads. He pleads with those who have turned against him. He's he's pleading with those who have decided to follow Absalom and turn against what God has already stated should be, which is David to be king. So he's basically, he's evangelizing. He's witnessing to them. How long, guys? And you know what that implies, how long? There is only a limited time. That's why we're in a day of urgency now to share the gospel wherever God gives us an effectual open door to share. But he says, how long? For this limited time, you know, how long until, until God moves? How long is God going to give them? You know, uh, will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? You're, you know, you can go to Ecclesiastes. Again, you know, um, the wise man writes these things and Ecclesiastes is a great book to study. It's so relevant for today. But what did he finish up saying about everything? All is vanity. All is vanity. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. And then he said, what's the best thing to do? He said, just seek after God and, and obey God. You know? And so, uh, so he's, he's pleading with these guys. Well, you know, how long are you going to um, uh, bring my name in reproach you know, and, and, uh, and, and slander me? How long are you going to do that for? You know, um, it's really 
given them what for he says you're you're challenging my integrity or um you're bringing it into question you turn my glory to shame um which really is uh, his relationship with god and david recognized in that that the real thing that mattered was his relationship with god and and you and i need to just bear that in mind as another little side issue don't worry about how people assess you it's what God says that really matters. It's what God says. It's not, you know, God justifies us. Man doesn't justify us. You know, we, we, if we walk with integrity, we walk as Christians in faith and, we're, and we stand for him and our light shines, you know what? It's what God thinks of us, not what man thinks of us. And so David's saying, you know, you, 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 you turn my glory to shame, uh, you, you you love things that are worthless and, and and all the false stuff and whenever you see that word silar it he means you ponder that think about it meditate on what i'm saying in other words he's saying you better wake up guys but but verse three's got that one word which is an awesome word but know that the lord has set apart for himself him who is godly and the lord will hear me when i call to him so he's saying to them, you know what? You're following after worthless stuff. You're, you're following after falsehood. But I want, to know, I want you to know that God has set apart for himself uh, those uh, who, who are godly and, and the Lord will hear me when I call to him. Great little thing there. Great little, um, basically, a, a, a testimony and a, and a witness of, of who God is to these people, trying to wake them up. So he prays. And then he petitions these guys and says, hey, come on. Um, you know what? Uh, um, the Lord will hear when we call. He set us apart. Second Thessalonians 2.13 says, we are bound to give, and this is Paul writing to that church. He says, we're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Why? Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and the belief of the truth. And so that's where it is with us too. So the Lord hears us when we call uh, to him. And, and we have been set apart. You are a set apart one. You've been set apart to the Lord. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's, it's a done deal. God sets you apart. He said, you're mine. Then, he's, then he starts working in us, of course. He says, I love, I, uh, I love you just the way you are, but I, but I love you too much to leave you that way. You know? And then he starts working in us. And that work of sanctification. But the reality is we are set apart. You all belong to the Father. You all belong to the one who created. And uh, what an awesome thing that is. Thirdly, um, he's got a prescription for how to overcome all of this. And I just want to uh, do that with you. He's got a prescription. It's, a, it's how to deal with slander uh, and, and the persecution that was coming his way. How can I do this? And when he, these four, uh, four, verses 4 and 5, when he speaks these, he's speaking them to himself and also to those who did come with him. He did have some that followed with him. And he speaks to them. And this is what he says to them. Uh, be angry and do not sin. Do you know that in, in most translations it says stand in awe and do not sin? Stand in awe and do not sin. But be angry uh, and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. In other words, don't let these guys get under your skin. Don't let these guys cause you to stumble and, and trip and, uh, and get into bad attitudes and, and dishonor God by that. And I read this, that kind of verse then I go, oh, boy, you've got a bit of work to do, you know? <laughs> and, and it's a reality and I've got my wife to keep me honest. It's just one of those things, you know? Uh, I, I, I can tend to get, look, I tell you, it's a righteous anger. Yeah, must be. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's got to be righteous anger. But you know what? I I do. I tend to get a little bit towy about about the stuff, and uh, which is why maybe, um, I well, I try to be very careful when I vent on social media, and I've got my little places where I do it, you know. And uh, uh, but anyway, um, be angry and do not sin. 
And I like the translation stand in awe too. Because, you know, when it's all coming against us, when we've been slandered, when we've been persecuted, when we're, when we're in a position like David or Jeremiah or Habakkuk, when we're in that position, situation, as we, as we step back and, and we understand that we're set apart and then if we cry out to our God, He hears us. And I've got to tell you at night time, to know that God listens to you is such a tremendous tranquilizer to for you to be able to sleep. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, uh, I could just tell you of the, of the first, let me just say, the first couple of weeks, um, I've, I'd say I've had a quadruple thingy in here, which, and, and when I first came home, I, don't, I didn't really, I said to Roe, you sure they needed to do that? You know, and, and I'd forgotten it. I did, Lord blanked my brain out. He knew I'd most probably... Uh, stupid enough to freak right out but you know and then she as Rel began to explain to me some of the things they did you know and then I thought oh I know what I'll do I'll go on YouTube and I'll see how they do a heart operation (laughs) I did (laughs) and I watched and I watched them do a bypass and everybody saw you have a a, a double or a triple and then somebody phoned up and wanted to come and clean the the windows and the gutters or something. Oh, I say, now I got you down at a triple. I said, no way. I said, oh, I had a quadruple. You know, and anyway, I watched this thing. And I kind of said to her, do you know what they do? They kill you before they make you well. <laughs> and she said, yeah, yeah. Well, I never knew that. I said, I would never have gone through with that. <laughs> How stupid can you be? But you know when you when you come home from those sorts of things and, and though, when you have surgery, the enemy can come in with fear, and this is what I want to just get to. Um, there were nights where I had to battle through uh, the enemy's stuff thrown, you know, bang, 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 you know, uh, and, which stops you from sleeping because all you know you're just thinking. When and I used to lie in bed and and. Uh, I think it was the rail. One time then I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, what, do you, what, what was that for? Well, I got to a stage where every time I could go and get a deep lung of oxygen, I'd say, oh, thank you, Lord, because I could go for a while and I couldn't get it because it, the, the pump had to, the, the, all the pumping and the plumbing had to work properly to get the oxygen and all that sort of stuff. You know, so um, but the enemy can get at you. The enemy can get at you. And that's why I love this chapter here. The enemy could have got right at David. I'm not saying that he wasn't concerned, but he knew what to do. And if we know what to do in these circumstances, you'll see in a minute, very quickly, very quickly, um, how to cope with it. But he says, but he says, you know, be angry and do not sin. So we're we're, we're thinking we're seeing this here. This is this is a righteous anger. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That kind of thing. Check your heart. Meditate. He says within your heart. It means to discuss with yourself. You know, uh, and I do that a bit. And you know, um, uh, you know, what's going on? What am I doing? Is this? And I can remember the Lord telling me uh, very early in the piece. Oh, so. Um, do you do you believe what you've been preaching for 35 years or not? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, you know. And but I but it was great because it made me come straight up. It was like I ran into a brick wall. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, Lord. What how stupid this, you know? So meditate, he says. Meditate on your heart. It's so easy to brood on things, isn't it? And uh, we've got to give them over to God, and uh, because the Lord gives us quietness. Be still and know that I am God. You know, it's just such an awesome thing. Be still and know that He's God. Um, and He went on. And he said, "I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth, no matter what happens." And that's what that's what Habakkuk came to the conclusion. He realized, "Hang on a minute. There's going to be exile. There's going to be all these things going on. But but God was going to still be exalted in all the earth. He's still going to reign. He's still going to be in control." And no matter what we go through, no matter what comes against us, God's still in control. That's why we can look at this COVID 
mess across the globe and, and see what they call the, the new norm and all this other rubbish they're throwing out at us, you know, and we, and we see all this stuff happening. But you know what? God is still in control. Uh, whether Trump wins or Sleepy Joe wins or, or whatever goes on over in America, it doesn't really matter because God is still sovereign and still in control and still knows what he's doing. We don't read anywhere where he's at any time uh, in, in the history as we know through the word that God at some stage admitted that he went back across into the dark corner of his room and went, oh man, what have I done? <laughs> never, never. He knows exactly what's going on. And so the, so the prescription here is make sure that we don't get, let it get under his our sin, our, our skin, you know, whatever that is, you know, whatever that's coming against us. Meditate with our heart when we go to bed. Meditate on the things of the Lord and just be still before him. And we rest in that. And uh, that's a great prescription for overcoming all sorts of stuff. Um, in Exodus 14, Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he will work for you today. Yeah, I'm sure. When I was, if I was standing at the shores of the Red Sea and I'm watching Pharaoh bucket down the hill there with his chariots and here's some guy out front there holding the staff with a big grey beard going, it's okay, it's okay, you know. But he went on, he said, For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see him again no more forever because Jehovah will fight for you, so you shall just hold your peace. Powerful stuff, isn't it? That's where the Lord wants us to be and that's where he invites us to come to. He went on and he says, offer the sacrifices of um, righteousness. Or, you know, for you and I, we offer the sacrifice of praises and some more nice choruses, you know, offer up the praise of, uh, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and just the obedience is a sacrifice just to obey the Lord. Um, but I like Psalm 51. I'll just tell you, I won't look it up. I've got it here, so let me just read it to you. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. God will not despise. God will not despise. Have you ever been in those circumstances where you're just, you're just broken hearted? Oh man, it's been a dog of a day, you know. And uh, all those work colleagues, they just gave me the whole treatment today. And, or the, or this, you know, whatever it may be. Oh, this illness. Oh, I didn't know I had that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, just, you know, the, says there, hey, you know, we just come before him with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Lord, I just come to you. I'm nothing without you. I know I've messed up a lot. And you know what? I've got no rights. Uh, I belong to you. And he says, God won't despise you when you come to him like that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. You know, that's where it's at for us. Um, you remember Paul's exhortation. I, I, I'm, I'm watching now. You know, I've got one eye just twisted. I can, I'm watching it. <laughs> just give me a few more minutes. We're nearly there. Um, you remember Paul's exhortation in Philippians. And this is, this, is a, this is bedrock for me. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and supplication, just let your requests be made known unto God. And then he will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word guard is awesome because you know what it means? Guard or garrison. I got it. I got it, Daryl. I got it. It's okay. I've given you room to move here in this circumstance. I've got it. It's okay. <sighs> wow. So we weigh up everything in light of who God is, what he has promised, and then we rest in that. Because the fourth thing, we've gone from prayer to pleading with those who are against. We've seen his prescription for overcoming, and it results in the last one, which is, peace let's read it it says there are many who say who will show us any good you know what there's a lot of pessimists around okay even in christian circles there's a lot of pessimists you know you come out and you say god's in control oh, oh yeah but you don't know 
I just said God's in control. Yeah, but oh my goodness. You know, there are a lot of those around. There are many who say, who will show us any good? You know, we, we wail, gnashing of teeth. Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart. The word gladness there is beautiful. It means joy and pleasure. It means delight. Let me just quickly read Psalm 63 to you. Oh, it's just, it's just, it really is nice. It's really nice. Um, I'll give, how many verses can I read? I'll just do a few. Listen to this. Verse 3 of Psalm 63. Because your loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise you thus will I bless you while I live or as long as I live I will bless you Lord I will lift up my hands in your name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips you can go on and on in that in that Psalm 63 it's pretty nifty you know so he says you have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. And you know what he's saying there? He's saying, listen, you can have a bumper crop and you can have it just flourishing and the wine vats overflowing and, and, and your storehouse could be full of grain and all that. He says, but my gladness is more than that. Paul said to us, oh, I've learned to be content in what a, whatever situation I am, whether I've got a lot or whether I've got nothing. I've just learned to be content. The Lord is my strength. You know, same principle here. And it's the same principle for us. And then he says this, verse 8. <laughs> after weighing up everything else, after weighing it up, he comes to this, he says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Do you know what? It was Paul also who said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And could I just say to you also, if God be for us, what can be against us? Who made this tent? God. Who knows every part of me? God. He created me. It's like we were at Macca's having a really healthy breakfast this morning before we just came up the road. And, and uh, what was that car that pulled up? Did I? A Porsche pulled up. Well, this guy with his camera, you know, and it's this Porsche, you know, uh, and you think, oh, my goodness, look at that sort of car, you know. It doesn't matter whether you've got a Porsche, a Lamborghini, or a Morris Minor. God is watching over us. God is better than all of that. Oh, the gladness that he can put in our hearts with just with what we have. He comes to this whole conclusion. He's prayed. He's given it to the Lord. He's assured that the Lord hears him. He's had the opportunity to turn around that those that come against him and witness to them and, and share with them and cry out to them and plead with them. And then he's, he's worked through to that place. Well, what, this is the prescription. This is how it is. I meditate in my heart. I don't let myself get angry with all this stuff that's going on. I offer up the sacrifice, Lord, of praise and thanksgiving. I think I'll go to bed now. And he falls asleep. And the peace is just awesome. You want good sleep? You want sweet slumber? Just rest in the Lord. Just rest in him. You know, he found peace. He found awesome peace. And he was able to sleep because he knew that you alone, O Lord. The word alone really means there is nothing else. Nothing. You alone. Not you and my bank balance, not you and my career, not you and you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. It's just so good. This, this, is, this comes from a guy who's lost his palace. His men have turned against him. The whole kingdom appears to be against him. He's dependent on other people to supply him with some tucker so they can have a meal. Yet he says, I'm happy. I'm joyous. I'm, life's a pleasure. The word also mirth, you know, with that, <laughs> that kind of attitude. This is what David's got. Who made him happy? 
You have put gladness in my heart, Lord. You and you alone. And when we get to realize this, we can, you know, we can rest in the Lord and we can sleep soundly at night. And, and uh, what a psalm of hope. What a psalm of encouragement. You know, somebody said it this way. David started out with sadness and ended with gladness because he worked through the, the whole thing. He started with tears, the guy said, and ended with triumph. And once again in his life, still on the run, still being persecuted, sleeping like a baby, sleeping like a baby. I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you, O Lord. You alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Let me just say, no matter what the trial is, today that you might be going through no no matter what circumstances you find yourself in no matter what may be ahead whether that's heavy surgery or whether that's a, a, a at this present time a, a not so enjoyable job or or whether it's just looking out in the world and just seeing it fall apart apparently somebody said it's not falling apart it's fallen into place according to God's plan but if if those things are there and they're before you and and, and they've been kind of eating you up a little bit and causing some concern um, just commit it to the Lord just say Lord you take it all you look after it because you are the Lord that that I can meditate on and and you are the father that hears me when I call and you are the one that set me apart from all this other stuff you know and you'll start to experience the gladness and the joy in your heart. Like the crazy world may be causing concern. And it may be causing us all, we're going, well, what is going on? But you know what? That old song that came out, some of you might remember it. This is an admittance. He's got the whole world in his hand. That one. And that's our God. So no matter how tight no matter how narrow you you feel hemmed in god will enlarge the place around you all we need to do is just turn to him trust him and he gives us the space to move so that we can dwell in safety and peace and all oh, the sweetest of slumber and how i love my sleep let's pray heavenly father we are so thankful that we have an awesome sovereign god We have a God that's totally and absolutely in control of every situation, every circumstance, not just around me, not just around Australia, but around the whole globe. You are in control. You're omnipresent, as we heard. You're omniscient and you're omnipotent, all-powerful. And Father, just like David, help us to make the first instant to pray to you to come to you and lay it bare before you and if there are opportunity to share with somebody about that then fine otherwise we move to the third step we have a prescription to cope with it and it's all about you and then we can rest in peace and safety because you alone are God Lord it's such a great thing I pray that we will always just be encouraged by the life of a guy like David who's, who teaches us really good steps and how to walk with you, how to live for you and how to rest in you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.